Welcome, friends, to Science Talk. I am your host and resident oceanographer, Jim Massa. Okay, this is an important uh, study that just came out in May of 2022. Marine anoxia linked to abrupt global warming during Earth's penultimate ice house. And the, it's published in uh, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, or PENIS. And uh, the authors are uh, Chen, Montagnez, Zong, Wang, and uh, those folks there. And uh, let's take a look at the significance, and then the abstract, and we'll discuss. Massive carbon release with abrupt warming has occurred repeatedly during greenhouse states. And these events have driven episodes of ocean deoxygenation and extinction. Records from these paleo events coupled with biogeochemical modeling provide clear evidence that with continued warming, the modern oceans will experience substantial deoxygenation. There are, however, few constraints in the geologic record on the effects of rapid warming under ice house conditions. We document the carbon cycle perturbation that occurred under an Earth system state experiencing recurrent glaciation. A suite of proxies suggests increased seafloor anoxia during this event in step with abrupt increase in CO2 partial pressure and a biodiversity nadir. Low point. Warming mediated increases in marine anoxia may be more pronounced in a glaciated versus unglaciated climate state. That is very interesting. Piecing to, and they go to the abstract here. Piecing together the history of carbon perturbations, events throughout Earth's history, has provided key insights in how the Earth system responds to abrupt warming. Previous studies, however, focus on short-term warming events that were superimposed on longer-term greenhouse climate states. Here we present an integrated proxy, car carbon and uranium, isotopes and paleo CO2, multi-component modeling approach to investigate an abrupt carbon perturbation and global warming event about 304 million years ago that occurred during a paleoglacial uh, state. We report a pronounced Negative carbon and uranium isotopic excursions coincident with a doubling of atmospheric CO2 partial pressure and a low point in biodiversity. The isotopic excursions can be linked to an injection of about 9,000 gigatons of organic matter derived carbon over about 300,000 years and to near 20% of aerial extent of seafloor anoxia. Earth system modeling indicates that widespread anoxic conditions can be linked to enhanced thermocline stratification and increased nutrient fluxes during this global warming within an ice house. So in other words, you get enhanced stratification that leads to anoxic conditions. Now, Earlier, they stated that it might have been more pronounced in glaciated versus unglaciated climate state. They did not state it does not occur in unglaciated climate state. It occurs in both. You get uh, stratification that leads to uh, deoxygenation and total anoxic in certain areas of the, of the oceans. They're just saying that their results from this time period, about 304 million years ago, seems to indicate Perhaps it's more widespread in glaciations. They try to figure out a determination for that. Observations and climate models indicate that the dissolved oxygen inventory of the modern ocean is decreasing. With temperature-driven decline in oxygen solubility being a key driver, right? You've heard me say... Uh, oodles and oodles of times before that, you know, gas solubility decreases with increased temp water temperatures. Well, yeah, you know, 
That's established uh, physics, established science. A decline in ocean dissolved oxygen expressed as an expanded oxygen minimum zone, OMZ, will negatively impact marine ecosystem, leading to significant loss of biodiversity in the ocean. This is of significant concern for the world's largest fisheries situated in the most productive areas of global oceans, as these regions are particularly, particularly susceptible to ocean deoxygenation. So there's some uh, important things here, uh, what they're getting at. So they looked at uh, uh, empirical constraints on the magnitude of ocean uh, deoxygenation during climate perturbation uh, come predominantly from quaternary glacial into glacial transition or early Cenozoic rapid warming events. In particular, the PETM, the temporal scales of warming and deoxygenation of these events differ by an order of magnitude 10 to the fourth versus 10 to the uh, five years. Now there's a thousand versus 10,000 years. Excuse me, uh, 10,000 versus 100,000 years. Constraints on ocean circulation and biogeochemical cycles across warming events in the Quaternary are more robust than in Earth's deep past. And they go on from there. I will leave the URL in the comments section. those who want to read this in further uh, detail. And they, you know, they go through some particulars here, etc. And they show some graphics, uh, looking at isotopic uh, data, etc. Here's a very interesting sentence here. And as I read it, I want you to think about what we've discussed on this channel, what I've discussed with you folks before. The markedly negative isotopic value of the emitted carbon requires an organic source. Don't worry about the isotopic values. Let's concentrate on this. An organic source. One potential source of the isotopically light carbon is thermogenic methane. Thermogenic, not biogenic, thermogenic, those methane that might be trapped in the geological formations, maybe it's frozen over, whatever, it gets suddenly released. Like I discussed with you in the LabTev uh, C, where at the, the shelf slope interface, at the shelf break there, the basically the explosions of methane that are occurring that are of a thermogenic nature or source. released during the initial intrusions of, of volcanics into organic rich sediments. So they're basically citing that methane will lead, can lead, be a factor leading to abrupt warming that could lend, then lead to anoxic condition or at least a deoxygenation in the oceans. So they continue to discuss more of the uh, isotopic uh, uh, aspects. And what I'm looking for is this right here. Mechanism of marine anoxia. To determine the potential mechanism that may have been responsible for, for significant ocean anoxia during the KGB warming, we carried out climate model simulations using the fully Couple Community Earth System Model, CESM, with the KGB event Paleo Geography. Our simulation suggests that ocean deoxygenation, deoxygenation was tied at least in part to enhance thermal stratification and weaken deep meridional overturning circulation in the Northern Hemisphere. There you have it. If you have increased stratification, it's going to impede nutrient flow. If you impede nutrient flow, primary productivity will decrease. 
well, what's the, what's the source that the producers uh, release? Oxygen. So now if primary productivity decreases, so does the oxygen level. And then what happens? Oh, there's no oxygen in the water for the zooplankton, the fish, to uh, respire. They start dying. That leads to decrease biodiversity. Now, this will also impact uh, marine mammals. We say, wait, hey, wait a second. Marine mammals breathe atmospheric oxygen. True. But they do what? They eat fish. Or if you're a baleen whale, you eat loads and loads of krill, which are what? Organisms that rely on dissolved oxygen. So their numbers start declining. The marine mammals are not going to have anything to eat themselves. They will also die off. So in a glacial state with low CO2, low uh, concentrations, the, these are square brackets, means concentration, uh, 280 parts per million, deep water formation occurs in both hemispheres of the Panthalassic Ocean. Ocean warming in an interglacial state, high CO2, high CO2 concentration, decreases surface seawater density, induces a poleward migration of isopycnal outcrops as compared with the glacial state. Basically, you get stratification. That's what they're saying. So, and yeah, there it is. Indicating enhanced seawater stratification during warming. Critically, increased surface stratification reduces mixed layer depths, which will decrease ocean interior oxygen concentrations. Warming induced surface stratification in northern high latitude also causes a shutdown of deep convection that in turn leads to a 61% reduction in maximum overturning in the northern Pandalassic Ocean. And, and the reason why they're saying that is because they're going back, you know, hundreds of millions of years, so the configuration of the continents were different. Is basically what that is. These results suggest that a restructuring of circulation regime may have played a role in inducing anoxia and any further work. Basically, fund us for more research. And they go on to explain perhaps some other contributing factors. And then they go into lengthy materials and methods and modeling uh, uh, section. So why am I sharing this with you? Because they're showing that What's happened in the past will inform us what's happening now and in the f near future. What they're showing is that when you have warming, you get enhanced stratification in the oceans. This can reduce uh, thermal haline flow, basically, but it reduces net primary productivity which in turn reduces ocean oxygen concentrations. You get at least a deoxygenation and leading to anoxic, which means regions that have zero oxygen concentration. And then when that happens, organisms start dying off and that can lead to mass extinction or at least a severe significant decrease in biodiversity. What do we have happening today? We have the exact same conditions here. We have the warming. The oceans are warming. We know that. I've covered that with you time and time again. We have increased stratification. I've discussed that with you. We are also seeing what's called a shoaling. Now, a, the mixed layer depth getting shallower and shallower. So if the mixed layer depth is shallower, then there's less, then the concentration decreases. Concentration of the nutrients, the nitrates, the phosphates, those chemical species, all which contribute to the decreased primary productivity. And we're already seeing that. We're seeing a reduction in that. And so 
you have the stratification, you have the inability to mix nutrients into the, the shrinking mix layer. So therefore that's reducing the primary productivity. That's reducing uh, ocean oxygen concentration, which then affects uh, you know, the zooplankton, the invertebrates, the fish, and so forth. So their numbers start declining. You've, you've heard me say how many times the oceans are dying. And then what? You say, oh, that's really bad. You know, oceans are dying. You know, of course, now, that's setting aside what we're doing overfishing. That's another topic. But why should we care? Because phytoplankton provide 55 to 80% of atmospheric oxygen. And the primary productivity in the oxygen is reducing, which it is. We're measuring it. That means atmospheric oxygen it will be declining. And guess what? It's already being measured. It's already uh, we're already seeing a decline in atmospheric oxygen concentration. So oxygen concentrations in the oceans decrease, in the atmosphere decrease. This will affect humans directly. So by warming the, by burning the fossil fuels, we're warming the planet, we're warming the oceans, we're shutting off vertical mixing, we're stratifying the oceans, we're reducing primary productivity that will have cascading effects through numerous ecosystems. sobering thought. For those of you who are chemists and uh, want to look at the isotopic uh, information in here, I will leave the uh, URL in the comments section. But uh, I'm I, uh, doing this video to drive home what I just said here. That that's, that's the take-home message. They're demonstrating this happening in the past, and we can see it happening in the present. This, is, this should be of extreme concern, among other things. Thank you for your time.